more stories podcast. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you some darn good ones in a row. We got some life coach ones. We got guests. We got assorted meats and cheeses, things of that nature. Uh, thank you everybody for hanging in there. You guys are cool, man. Y'all just good people, man. Y'all like sons to me, man. If you need life coaching, uh, my email for that is coach. JJ37 at gmail.com. Coach JJ37 at gmail.com. Um, there are testimonials on my website, jmore.com, with my stand up dates are up there as too. Uh, all that stuff is up there too. My man Dan, I have to respect everybody's confidentiality. If I work with you, I send you a non disclosure agreement. So I, you know, you're protected trust wise because I will never break your trust ever. Uh, so let's just say this dude's name, everybody's name that I'm saying is used by permission. Dan writes uh, on the testimonials page of jmore.com, JJ did more for me than years of therapists and medications ever had. In just a few weeks, I began to feel better about myself and my life. Do yourself a favor and trust JJ. Dan W. Uh, my man Bill Todd, first and last name, he said I could use. This is one of my first guys when I was walking into the fire of doing this life coaching stuff, and then I'll get into the business here on how to eliminate confrontation in two steps. Bill Todd, buddy, I love you, man. I'm proud of you, buddy. JJ is a gifted, intuitive coach. If you're wondering if you should reach out to hire him, follow that hunch. I'm glad I did. I'm a spiritual director and a pastor. I know the value of a good coach. JJ's a good coach. What makes his coaching special is JJ himself, working via email, held a unique power, organizing your thoughts and examining them because our words matter. In his most helpful response to me, he opened with, you're full of shit. Close quote. I was full of shit. He's compassionate, kind, no fluff, and his coaching gave me the keys to see a victim mentality that I was holding on to like a lifeline. Bill Todd, a guy less full of shit than before. Man, I love you, Bill Todd. I'm proud of you, man. How to eliminate confrontation in two steps, okay? You ready for this? First of all, the definition of confrontation, uh, a hostile or argumentative situation or meeting between two opposing parties. Then I looked up hostile, showing or feeling dislike, unfriendly. A hostile or argumentative situation or meeting between two opposing parties. Okay. So let's think about every time you feared confrontation in your life. And I'm not talking about the kind I grew up with where I, on my walk to school, some kids jogged past me and said, uh, hey, Jason Venezia is going to kick your ass, man. Huh? Then I'm afraid of confrontation because I'm going to get beat up. So first of all, let me, let me tell you this, guys. Nobody likes confrontation. Nobody. It, it, it's really weird when people go, I just don't like confrontation. Nobody fucking likes confrontation. There's assholes out there that that like maybe the commotion afterwards. Like if I go into this guy's office and I tear him a new asshole and I scream at him and I tell him he's a piece of shit and he's a big muscly guy. He stands up. I'll say, sit the fuck down. I'm the boss here. Uh, Nobody enjoys that part. But you know what they enjoy afterwards is all the acolytes and accolades. And all the asshole psychophants coming up to you going, hey, man, that was badass. And you're like, yeah, right? I'm alive. I exist because you saw me do that shitty thing to that person. Nobody likes confrontation. So you're not unique. None of us like confrontation. I grew up fighting not like, you know, I didn't grow up in like the hood or I wasn't in like a boxing caravan or something. But, you know, we were just bored lower middle class kids and we just would go into other towns and we just fucking brawl other kids it's what we did we punch each other in the face the dicks we'd box on the roof of my garage we fought all the time that's that's confrontation but that's being a kid nobody likes confrontation george foreman said to me when he was heavyweight champion of the world i asked him when you're across the ring from the other guy what's going through your mind Like, straight up, man. Man to man. Real talk. Like, what are you thinking? And George Foreman, I thought, would say, I'm thinking I'm going to kill him. George Foreman looks at me and goes, I'm just scared. Scared. George Foreman is fucking scared? He doesn't like confrontation. 
if you don't like confrontation, it can mean you're, I don't know, you're forward thinking. You, you thought the situation forward so much, maybe it's not worth it. You know, you're analytical that way. Maybe you're codependent. I'm codependent. We don't like confrontation because it must be our fault. We're going to do something to fix ourselves. And then when that doesn't work, we're going to go back to the bookstore, to the self-help aisle and try to fix ourselves some more. When the other person doesn't try at all, maybe you're a people pleaser. I'm going to have a whole episode on people pleasers. Corey, don't let me forget that one. Maybe you're a, a fucking pussy. Because that's what it is. Because in the definition of confrontation, a hostile or argumentative situation, how the hell do you know your fear of confrontation, whatever that thing is, how do you know it's going to be a hostile situation? Is that really an opposing party? Is your mom an opposing party? Really? Your brother and sister? Your brothers and sisters, your step-parent, your uncle, these are opposing parties or family that's a little nuts? <clears throat> so you're already making an assumption that it's going to be confrontational, obviously, but argumentative and hostile. And you're already two opposing parties. You're showing up confrontational. You are. The person that's afraid of confrontation is afraid of it because in your mind you've created confrontation that ha doesn't exist because it hasn't happened yet. And that's what's plaguing everybody, really, to be honest with you, is assumption. Well, if I say this, he's going to say that, and then you know he might come No, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I, I stopped doing assumptions. Corey will tell you. All my friends will tell you. I don't. No assumptions. Never. Maybe. I don't know. Hasn't happened. So if you don't like confrontation like everybody else, how about this? Instead of going to the opposing party, showing or feeling dislike, unfriendly, instead of going into an argumentative situation, let's change the word confrontation. Yeah, I took seven minutes to get to the point, but hey, what do you want me to put out a two-minute podcast? <laughs> Instead of confrontation, I don't like confrontation. Okay, no one does. I'm going to ask you this rhetorically. If it's helpful to you, don't you like information? I love information. So we all like information? Right. Hey, what's that girl over there? What's her name? Information you like. Is that guy married? Information you like. We all like information. So instead of confrontation, use the word information. So at work, I heard my boss wants to talk to me. Somebody else said he's upset because I misplaced a file. And that could have cost her her job. At that part, I'm just adding to it because obviously that's the, that's the weight of the situation. But man, I don't want to talk to my boss. I'm afraid of confrontation. Well, you love information. So how about instead of confrontation when you go to your boss and get some information hey i heard you wanted to see me is that true that's the first piece of information you can get from your boss there's no confrontation here you go into your boss's office i heard you wanted to see me is that true he's either going to say or she's either going to say yes or no it's either true or false yes i did want to see you okay good i got some information uh okay here i am what can, I, what can I do uh, for you? Can I help you somehow? What's going on? What's going on? What's happening? What can I do? They're going to give you information. I can't possibly go home for the holidays because my mom invited my uncle, the one that drinks, and I know if I talk to my mom about it, she's going to start yelling at me. Maybe. Hasn't happened. Maybe. Maybe. So instead of the confrontation with your mom about why she let your drunk uncle come to your eight-year-old's birthday party, why don't you approach your mom for information? Mom, can I ask you a question? That's the first thing she's going to give you is information as to whether or not she feels like dealing with you at that minute. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. There's some information you just got. You can ask her a question. Cool. I'm curious as to the thought process because I want to help myself understand and be more in sync with you about inviting uncle, you know, whatever his name is. Um, that's all. Now that person starts escalating. They're, they're having a confrontation by themselves because you just came there for information. 
Your uncle, uh, I don't know his fucking name. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> your uncle, your uncle Bob is an alcoholic. Your mom maybe does some blow, like he definitely does blow, right? He gets handsy. Your mom invites him to your six-year-old daughter's birthday. Why, why the fuck would she do that? Why would she do that? Oh, I gotta go talk to her about it, but I hate confrontation. No, 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 it's not confrontation. You just asked everybody else besides her, why would she do that? That's the information that's lacking, and that's what's making a confrontation. You follow me here? Yeah. So instead of confrontation, get information. Now, here's the important part. Don't just get that information and be prejudiced how you were going in and stay the way you were going in. Informa- I was told this once at a meeting. It was pretty cool. Information is useless without transformation. You can have all the information in the world. Look at school. They give you all the information. They tell you what's going to be on the test, but if you don't study, if you don't apply it, if you don't transform the information into knowledge, it proof form on a piece of paper, on a test or a quiz, you're going to fail and they're going to think you're an idiot. They gave you all the information. They gave you a book with additional information in it. Everybody else in the class is getting the same information, talking about that information. Your homework is about that information. You have all the information. You just didn't make the transformation. So instead of confrontation, go get information. Okay? Nobody is angry getting information. Otherwise, you wouldn't get it, right? Get information. With that information, you can then transform, make a transformation in a lot of different ways. You can either become very compassionate to the other person's plight, maybe what they're up against. Maybe that drunken, coke, uh, feely, handsy, touchy, Uncle Touchy's puzzle room uncle getting invited to your six-year-old daughter's birthday. Maybe that guy just put the screws to your mom and just was fucking relentless And your mom's like, all right, just come, because she doesn't want the confrontation anymore with him. You know? So now you have transformation to compassion, and now you and your mom are allies. You're not opposing parties. Your boss, when you ask him, hey, I heard you wanted to see me. Is that true? Yes, that's true. That's information. Uh, What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Maybe your boss says something terrible, like uh, you, uh, you work like an asshole. Like when you work, you look like an asshole. Like shit should come out of you. And you should smell bad and deviants want to do things to you. That's how bad your fucking work is. Oh, now you could have, you know, more confrontation or more transformation with that information. What do I do to stop working like an asshole? (laughs) That's valuable information that you never would have gotten to without gathering the information without getting the transformation. So confrontation, you don't wanna have any confrontation? I don't have any, I really don't. Twice a year maybe, and it's weird, it's a weird night. Something weird is happening. Like all the ushers at Staples Center keep putting their hands on me like, whoa, whoa, wait here, wait here. That happened to me last year when I was with Aaron. I almost knocked three dudes out. So did he. So, no confrontation. Just go get information, okay? With that information, have a transformation. That's it. (laughs) Hey, I love you guys. Glad to be back on the board. Sing a simple song. Peace.